Yes, we call uh, Mr. Depp. Okay. Oh, shit. Whoa. Here we go. They're calling him uh, now. Okay. I would have waited till he, I would have made him the last witness. Maybe they are, but. Strange. They did that right after I booked my trailer. A trailer so your still here? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Wow. This was unexpected. Good morning, Mr. Depp. Good morning. Um, we heard a lot about some statements that Mr. Waldman made. Do you remember that? Yes. And Mr. Waldman is your attorney or was your attorney? Yes. Could we please pull up defendants exhibit 1245? And this is already in evidence, so permission to please yes. publish. If we could scroll down to the second page. <coughs> Mr. Depp, do you see the statement here attributed to Mr. Waldman? Yes, I do. When's the first time that you saw this statement? Um, when I was sued. Or when I sued. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the what, laughing? What's the objection to this question? Like, like legit under the under the rules of evidence. What is the legitimate objection to? When was the first time you saw this statement, which quote unquote is or in brackets is at issue in this trial? Uh, we have to break up the flow of this testimony, Your Honor. <laughs> They have to walk a very fine line because if if he opens the door to privileged uh, conversations, yes. it could it could get very bad quickly. So they have to do it in sort of this way. When is the first time you saw this? Well, the first time I saw this is after I filed a lawsuit and the counterclaim came a year later. This was in the counterclaim. I had no idea that this was ever published. Mm -hmm. And then they're probably asking if they ask this question, he answers it. Does that mean he's disclosed a, a client communication because he's effectively stated that there was no communication between him and Adam Waldman about this? And now we get to rebut that by asking questions about those communications is I guess that would be the objection maybe or the, the sidebar reasoning, because I, I can't think of any impropriety in the question. <laughs> We can pull these a bit back up. Thank you. Mr. Depp, when is the first time that you saw this statement by Mr. Waldman? <laughs> yeah. um, the first time that I uh, ever saw this statement uh, was in August. Um, it was when the piece was the, the, the um, when she, August 2020, when I was countersued by Ms. Heard. It's the first time that I saw any of these uh, statements. Can we please pull up defendants, defendants exhibit 1246? And this is also already in evidence. Right. Thank you. We Amber's going to start down. railing Second. lines right from the desk. <laughs> Third, perhaps. Thank you. Mr. Depp, do you see the statement that's attributed to Mr. Waldman here? I do. And when is the first time that you saw these statements? Uh, same, uh, when the, when the countersuit uh, was filed. And could we please go to Defense Exhibit 1247? And again, this is already in evidence. <clears throat> and if we could scroll down, please, thank you. Mr. Depp, do you see the statement attributed to Mr. Waldman. I do indeed, yes. And when's the first time that you saw this statement? The, 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 this, this is the same. It's uh, the uh, uh, counterclaim to August 2020. After you saw these statements for the first time, did you form an understanding as to where they appeared? I didn't, uh, as to where they had appeared, the statements. In what in what publication? Um, no, off the bat, I, I didn't know exactly 
um, it, it just seemed like a lot of word salad to me. Uh, I, I didn't know where they'd come from or, I mean, where they ended up or. Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Heard testifying that she, you did not assist her in getting her role in Aquaman? Uh, yes, I do, yes. And what is your response to that? Um, um, it's not, it's not, um, it's not exactly true. Do you know when Ms. Heard first auditioned for Aquaman? Strangely, I know the day. Well, no, I, yes, I do know the day um, because um, uh, I was scheduled uh, with um, my band, the, uh, the, the the Hollywood Vampires. Uh, we had done two shows at the Roxy, which is a place in Los Angeles, to um, rehearse for a, a, we were invited to play at the Rock and Rio um, concert, which is a huge rock and roll festival. So we did the two shows to go to Rio and play there. Um, Mr. Uh, I wanted to, wanted to uh, come with me and uh, uh, Whitney, her sister had come as well. Um, while we were there in Rio, we were rehearsing, getting ready for the show. Uh, Miss Hurd informed me that she would have to be going, she would have to get back to Los Angeles for an audition, meaning um, as basically after our two hour show or whatever, we had to, we would have to get on the plane immediately to make it back to Los Angeles um, for this audition. And um, that audition was, uh, uh, at Warner Brothers, it was uh, whatever film it was. And when were you performing at the Rock in Rio? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was the, I believe it was the 24th of September. In what year? Uh, that was 15. What do you understand happened after Ms. Heard auditioned for Aquaman? Um... <clears throat> After after Ms. Hurd's uh, audition or possibly auditions uh, for Warner Brothers and uh, the, the, I suppose the creative team, um, Ms. Hurd ex expressed to me that the film was going to be, Warner Brothers had said that the film was going to be shooting in Australia. And Australia was a, for Ms. Hurd, that was a potential problem which jackson your honor <laughs> your approach. okay because she's facing perjury <laughs> oof oof so uh am i I'm correct in thinking he's about to explain how he got her the aquaman gig because that that statement or that uh accusation is at issue in the trial so I'm yeah. I'm surprised they're calling him this early though. Uh, again, he for I, me he would have been my mic drop. But here's the thing: they blow their load on him right now, so they they're gonna have to just drop all their time on Cross on Johnny. So anybody who they've got left, they're gonna have nothing for. Yeah. Yeah. When they burned a bunch of time on Curry, uh, mm -hmm. did we ever get an updated time count from yesterday? It seemed very generous to Amber's team. Uh, to me, because she she said over five hours for Johnny's team and and like an hour and ten minutes for her team by by her count, and I was like, I I thought her team spent at least two hours yesterday. Uh, so I I didn't know if we got an updated number on that. But yeah, someone uh, asked in the chat if I would let him ramble on or keep him focused. You've got the time advantage. You know, they know they've budgeted out their time for the remaining witnesses. Uh, they know exactly what they have. The remaining witnesses are in like individual fact point witnesses for, for the most part. What's the, what's the data witness, uh, Andrea, who they've, who they're purportedly going to call today. Yeah. Brian Neumeister, he is the guy who 
was supposed to be doing the forensic extraction of, of Amber Heard's devices, but because oh, of the yeah. various shenanigans with, um, with, with producing those, uh, wasn't able to get information. However, back in the UK trial, uh, NGN had received a fair amount of these photographs and text messages and things like that from Amber Heard, and she provided them with metadata. So NGN had had their own expert that did an analysis of, of her evidence and found a significant number of metadata discrepancies. So I'm expecting that uh, Brian Neumeister is, is likely going to be able to testify to essentially what NGN had had uncovered. And then fingers crossed, he's going to be able to explain the problems that they're seeing in the metadata now and why I that is consistent that. Could you with please continue? Um, what happened after Ms. deliberate Ms. efforts audition to for it. Uh, I was informed uh, by Ms. Heard that the film was going to be um, shooting in Australia. And that that was of um, concern to her, and because there it was of concern um, to Warner Brothers, um, so she asked if I would because I I I'd had a I'd had she a she asked me a multi um, for for a few years I'd had a multi film. Uh, deal with with Warner Brothers and uh, so we'd been in business together so I knew these people I've been in I've been on films with them so I she asked me if I would speak to them I made a phone call and I I spoke to uh, objection hearsay your honor didn't say what he said didn't say what he said I don't believe he said anything I think he was going to say who okay. he spoke to all right let's, let's see overruled at this point um, I spoke to three, um, the three upper echelon um, Disney executive, uh, excuse me, Warner executives, Kevin Sujihara, Sue Kroll, and uh, uh, Greg Silverstein. Um, and I told them that Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. All right, I'll just say objection. On. Next question. Um, what was the result of you speaking with those individuals? Um, well, I, 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 um, I can only say that ultimately she did, she did get the job in the film. So hopefully I, I, I suppose I had curbed their worries to some degree. Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Heard testifying that she saw you consume eight to 10 MDMA pills while you were at I'll once, explain while the hearsay at a break, guys. Um, March of 2015. Yes, I do remember that. How many I also remember her saying that I took a handful. Objection beyond the scope. Question. Sorry, I just, that was extra residue. Right. Oh, sustain the objection. Next question. <laughs> residue. How many times have you done MDMA in your life, Mr. Depp? <laughs> uh, actually, not many, not that many times. I would say in my lifetime, maybe in my lifetime, MDMA six, seven, maybe. And how much MDMA have you done on those occasions? Uh, not enough to. Um, not enough to. Uh, properly well not, not not enough to properly properly experience the what the um chemicals are supposed to do to you have you ever consumed eight to ten mdma pills at once no ma'am no i have not because <laughs> um, i'd be dead I'm <laughs> Yes, really. and probably rather quickly. Mr. Depp, I'd like <laughs> to take some pictures from the home in Australia that Ms. Heard testified about. Sure. Could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 1817, which is already in evidence? <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Depp, do you recognize what's depicted in this photograph? Uh, yes, I do. That's the um, that's the downstairs bar um, of the house we rented in Australia. And can you please show the jury where you were sitting when Miss Heard threw um, the two vodka bottles at you? Um, if I touch this thing, it'll make a yes. Mark it will. Us. Okay, so. This chair, that one uh, here, was over here. Um, and it was in pretty much when I was turned around toward the, they were on swivels. So when I was turned around towards the bar, I'm facing the bar. When I turned around this way, the chair, this chair here was in uh, pretty much exactly the same position as this chair. It, it was when I was facing um, <clears throat> sorry, Miss Heard, who was, let's say she was, if you're looking at the photograph, she would be about here. Could you uh, draw a line in the direction where Miss Heard was relative yeah. to where you were sitting? Yeah. I'm going to screen so, grab this so and sell it as a Johnny Depp art NFT. Here, <laughs> um, Eight million dollars. She was over here. here approximately how far away from miss heard what well, from you was miss heard if you can recall i, I would say I, I would say it was probably 10 12 15 feet maybe a bit of 10 feet 12 feet Gosh, she's and pissed. approximately where was your hand when the vodka bottle hit it it was um it was leaning my arm was sorry. My my arm was leaning on the um, the marble bar, um, right there where the imaginary seat is, and uh, leaning, uh, kind of just leaning back and and um, looking at Miss Heard. She just walked away with the the second bottle. Uh, I mean, she, she walked this way when she threw the first bottle, which is uh, actually visible Can in you the please background circle where on the, the floor. First... Yeah. Could you please circle where the first bottle was? Oh, sorry, was? excuse me. Yeah. Oh, that is the um, exploded first bottle. <laughs> that, that went past my, <clears throat> that went past my head. And the second bottle um, hit right up here where my hand was resting on the um, marble bar. Can we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 1820? Mr. Depp, do you recognize what's depicted in this photograph? This is behind that very bar. And what do you see on the floor in this picture? Um, I see what looks to me like a, a, a some kind of napkin. It looks uh, solid, soiled, blood, I don't know. And I see glass in the corner blood obviously on the floor and um a towel leaning up on some cab something do you know how that bloody tissue got on the floor um i my best guess um objection calls, calls for speculation, speculation. Uh, sustained. Okay. Do, you, do you know how the blood got on the floor, Mr. Depp? I'm pretty well. I know how the blood got on the floor. It came from my dripping finger, <laughs> so that's why the tissue um, is is. Uh, I'm 99.9 percent .9 sure since it is. Uh, looks like he's got blood on it as well. Is what 
what I um, held my finger uh, held held my finger uh, with. That's what I said yesterday. Do you see the wall to the on the left side of the photograph? I do. Was there a wall mounted phone on that wall? On the left side of the photo. No, I didn't know. Uh, no. Not that I recall, no. Uh, could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 394, which is already in evidence? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Depp, do you recognize this text message? I, uh, I do. And what, what is this message? Um, it's a, it's a, a text to Dr. Kipper. Um, Just, I'm sorry, just reading through. Sure. Yeah, this is um, this is uh, my text to the to to uh, Dr. Kipper, who who had just happened to be in town, um, telling him that uh, I've had it and um, that I just lost a finger a finger too. How long after your finger had been injured did you send this text message, if you can recall? It's hard, it's hard to tell because when I look at the timestamp, it says delivered 3-7-2015, 5 o'clock. Um, but I know that because of Australia time, it was the 8th, and it was probably, this was, the whole thing lasted probably until about 2 p.m. Um, or so. When, when and that was when Kipper was called. Jerry was brought in. Jerry Judge, sorry, excuse me. So, do you have an estimate as to how long after your finger had actually been injured that you sent this message? I, I don't think it was very long. I think it was probably within the next. Was it? No, I'm sure it was in the next half hour or so. Um, I would have had to sneak into a, a bathroom, lock myself <laughs> in to type this out. <clears throat> and how were you able to send this text message to Dr. Kipper in the state that you were in? Um, well, he, he wasn't available at the time, so um, <laughs> just to sort of thumb your way through, don't you? <laughs> How long after sending this text message did you see Dr. Kipper? Um, I, I don't recall, but I think it, it took them probably 30 minutes or more, 30, 30 to 40 minutes to get there. And what did Dr. Kipper do when he first arrived at the home? Well, the, the first thing he wanted to do is inspect uh, the damage of my finger um, and try and figure out exactly what had happened, how it happened. And what did you tell Dr. Kipper about how your finger had been injured? Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? Say, we've right. discussed this several times. Part of medical treatment? Hearsay, we've discussed it several times. You, Rottenborn is pissed. By the way, Rottenborn, you can expect, Rottenborn is going to go hard on Johnny Depp on cross. Mm -hmm. With whatever time they have left, he is going to uh, be nasty. He's going to be angry because this is it. They don't get, uh, you know, after what Dr. Curry did to them. Yeah, they got a uh, swing for the fences here. Mm -hmm. this, yes. this is all they have left. And he is going, it is going to be probably gross uh, what he does. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah. Okay. So, real quick. Johnny Depp's statements to someone else made out of court are still hearsay. The only time you can introduce an out of court statement by one of the parties is if it's adverse to their interests. So the reason for that is because you can't cross examine effectively Johnny Depp on his own statement that he claims he made 
uh, previously because it'll be self-serving. Whatever his answer is will be self-serving in the testimony. You could, you know, always say, well, I, I told them how great they were and how lovely they were. And I only complimented people ever. And how would you ever cross examine that sentiment that they delivered? You, you can't because they're the one answering the question. So it's any out of court statement is hearsay uh, automatically. And then it's, it has exceptions that can allow it to be brought in. So, but one of those exceptions is statements made for purpose of medical treatment, right? Right. That, yes. Now, yeah. I was speaking to the previous thing about oh. when he called the Aquaman people and he was going to tell them oh, why yeah, they yeah, should yeah. allow Amber Heard. Right. For this, for this one, they've uh, objected to these statements that are related to medical treatment. This one, the question is: Is the statement part of the medical treatment? I would argue yes, but I, I guess they're going to argue that it's it's an extraneous statement that's not related to like a medical diagnosis because it's his statement and not a doctor's statement or something. Mr. Depp, when Dr. Kipper was treating your finger, what did you tell him about uh, how your finger and became they injured? Lost. Good job. Mm. Johnny Depp teams yes. won that one. Um, As they should have. Yep. I told him, I told him that there was obviously, I mean, when you saw the damage in the house and everything, the blood everywhere. I mean, obviously there was serious damage done. Um, I, there would be no point in lying to the man. He'd been through it with me and, and, uh, Ms. Herb before I told him that she had, uh, thrown a bottle, bottle of vodka and smashed my hair, smashed and cut my finger, uh, off. The tip of my finger, just the, just just the tip. tip. The chunk. <laughs> I miss uh, Mr. Depp, you heard Miss Heard testify um, about an alleged incident of abuse on your honeymoon. Do you remember that? I remember her testifying to that, yes. And when did you and Miss Heard go on your honeymoon together? I believe it, it, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of August. Um, because I, ju I just finished the film, maybe end of July, um, August. I I'm not quite good on the exact date. Do you recall the year? It was 2015, I believe. And where did you and Miss Heard go on your honeymoon? Um, we we um, took the uh, the Orient Express um, from Was Bangkok, murder? Thailand to Singapore. And what happened while you and Miss Heard were together on the Orient Express? Um, there, there, there were there were times when it was very agreeable, very nice. And then there were times when um, something, some, something had become dissatisfactory for her, and she would uh, start the the um, rant, the, the blooming of the of a fight we would would be on deck there and. Uh, uh, and and uh, at one at one point, it didn't. I mean, I don't remember it lasting long at all. I, I just remember that um, I I took a pretty good uh, shot to the um, to the face, to the eye, to the, somewhere up here. So I had a bit of a shiner. Um, but it, but but the. It all went, ended, and then everything got fine again, and we'd go to dinner, and it was all fine. Did Miss Hurd ever apologize to you for giving you the shiner? I don't, I don't recall. Can we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 162, which is already in evidence?
Mr. Depp, do you recognize this photograph? I do. It was with the, the yes, the, the, um, the chef and the major d and the staff were asking if they could take a photo with us, and they've been very kind at giving us a and private dinner card. So where was this photograph taken? That was in the, um, um, that looks like it's in the, yes, that's towards the back of the Orient Express. That's in the, uh, the, the, the back train com bar compartment. And just out back, you could smoke on the, on the sort of caboose or whatever. Nice. And what, if any, injuries do you have in this photograph? I think the, um, the, the eyes a little bit bugged out, if you will. Exactly. It's, yeah. How did that happen? Um, these things could happen very quickly if, if, if you disagreed. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. She just asked, how did that happen? I right. believe he was about to explain. Well, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. So, Mr. Depp, specifically, how did the injury in this photograph occur? Um, I'm sure it hit me. Is that better? <laughs> um, does this picture accurately reflect is that better? What you looked like on that date? I, I don't look at myself much, but it, it certainly looks like me with a black eye. <laughs> Does this picture appear to have been photogra uh, photoshopped in any way? Objection calls for speculation. N no, I think no. I think it would be difficult to photograph or uh, to uh, start getting into sort of digital processing with a number of people in the shot, especially in a wide shot. Could we please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1301? And this is a new one, Your Honor, so this is not an evidence. Okay, thank you. Mr. Depp, do you recognize what's reflected in this photograph? Uh, yes, this is the, the staff, uh, it's the manager, and uh, his staff at the um, um, Raffles Hotel in Singapore. Oh my God, they got the um, social media photograph. And before we left, they, uh, they asked if they could take a photograph with us. And when was this photograph taken? Um, well, that would have been, we were off the Orient Express. We stayed in Raffles, I believe a couple of, couple of days, few days. And then from there, we flew to San Francisco. So this photograph was taken after the photograph we just looked at? Th that this photograph was taken after the photograph in the dining car of the train, yes. Uh, Your Honor, I move uh, plaintiff's exhibit 1301 into evidence. Right, any objection? Oh, happy honeymoon. So any, 31st of October. Any, any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 1301 is an evidence can be published to the jury. Mr. Depp, what, if any, injuries do you see on your face Got in this it. photograph? I see pretty much the same. I, 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 Black eye under the left eye. I see that the, the area in here has been, um, well, is, is uh, swollen and... Uh, um, yeah, there's a bit of a shiner there. Should have used Amica and Ice. Thank you. We can take this down. <laughs> Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Hurd testifying that she punched you um, in the staircase incident because she thought of Ms. Kate Moss in the stairs? There it is. There's the link. Do, do I remember her saying that? Yes. Yes, I do. Three times. Yes, I do. <laughs> do you have any understanding as to what Ms. Hurd was referring to? I Yes, I do. And I, um, as, as Kate Moss, um, Kate testified, it was many, many years ago, um, And what exactly what happened is what she said happened. 
I uh, recall, I recall um, speaking with Ms. Hurd about an, uh, uh, that, in, that very incident um, because of the down, uh, downpouring of rain, because it was raining very heavily that day that Kate slipped. Uh, and I recalled the story to her. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Uh, may we approach Your Honor? Okay, so Ian Runkle, uh, Runkle of the Bailey, has stated that he does not think that this testimony is doing mm -hmm. Johnny any favors uh, because he does not believe that the jury believed any of the stuff that they're rebutting. So he puts it back at issue. I wanted to throw that. Of course, uh, we all love Runkle of the Bailey. This is not a pile on. I just was curious if anybody on the panel had any uh, thoughts about that. I, I personally disagree with him, but I wanted to know the rest of y'all. I think it's a it's a greater risk of error for them to assume that the jury is seeing things their way than to do what they are <laughs> doing and Rapp take the time to rebut it. Out the staircase, or uh, Kate Moss. I, I, I'll make it easy for Mr. Uh, rotten born. <laughs> rotten. Miss Heard uh, <laughs> took the story and turned it into a lie a Don't very ugly down. incident all in her mind <laughs> crazy mind yes there was never a moment where i pushed kate down any set of stairs yet she's spewed this three times before um, objection your honor miss heard simply testified that she had heard a rumor and that's What's your response? Oh, what's your objection? I'll overrule the objection. Mistakes and facts and evidence. I'll overrule the objection. <laughs> Get oh, owned. Wrecked. She Go said the she door. thought and about Kate Moss and jumped to her sister's defense. Voice. Certainly. What, what was you looking for? Um, so, what, what specifically had you actually told Miss Hurd about the incident with Miss Moss and the stairs? Very simply, that she had. We were in Jamaica. Um, I had left our bungalow um, about three minutes prior to her. I was standing outside and suddenly rain starts just coming down like it's, you know, uh, a monsoon. And then I remember looking and seeing Kate coming out the door and there were three little wooden stairs and she slipped her legs went up and she landed directly on her coccyx and her lower back. So, and she was obviously physically in pain uh, and she was hurt, she was crying. So I ran over and grabbed her to make, you know, to make sure she was all right. Um, that's, that's it. That's the, that's all I ever, but that's the whole story. But then um, the rumor of it, I'd never heard a rumor <laughs> of that um, before. Um, a rumor of her own creation. Uh, grabbed hold of it. I like that, I'm sorry. Mr. Depp, <laughs> uh, we heard testimony from Miss Heard's sister, Whitney, during this trial. Do you remember that? Yes. And how would you describe your relationship with Whitney when you were in a relationship with Ms. Hurd? I, 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 I liked Whitney very much. She taught me how to do cocaine. Initially, I mean, when I first met her, I liked her very much um, and grew to love Whitney. Um, very much. Um, because I, I always, it, it seemed... Whitney, Amber's sister, Whitney, seemed to always get the, the, the sort of dirty end of the stick. And, um, Especially on looks. I, I felt bad <laughs> for, her, for that because it wasn't new. It had been there for, for life. And that, was, that was, seemed pretty obvious. So I, 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 took, uh, I took to Whitney. Um, very, very quickly, very easily. 
She was a, she was a very sweet kid. She was wonderful. What do you mean that Whitney got the dirty end of the stick? Amber Beater. Here it comes. Um, it was a kind of a strange combination of loving sister, trusted sister and friend, um, and then lackey. And uh, then, you know, either the punching bag or the dartboard. Or Damn. the recipient of uh, of some rather demeaning and ugly um, words, or she would have wine thrown in her face. And who was the source of those demeaning words and the wine that you just referenced? Well, that would be Amber Heard, her sister. And how do you know that? It's not. Well, I witnessed quite a lot of it. Um, the wine in the face. Uh, was something that happened in New York, which uh, I think that even made it into the papers. I believe that even made it into the papers. It was in an elevator. How did you first learn about that incident? Monsieur told me in detail. <laughs> what else did you observe of... Um, Miss Heard and her sister Whitney's interactions during your relationship with Miss Heard. They were just constantly up and down, but I, you know, I could, I could sense, I could feel that Whitney was trying to please her sister, trying to be up to snuff and, um, it just seemed like she got shot down. Your time. Honor, it's gone beyond the scope of the question or his oh. foundation for knowledge of that. Your Honor, I, I, I asked what he observed, you know, between them. I think this is responsive to that. And his testimony as to what Whitney felt is. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Do you think this is that big sidebar they had? We're going to call Johnny Depp and go into these prior acts. And we yeah. think they're, we think the door's open on them. Did you ever see Miss Heard physically attack? Whitney. I think it's to show Whitney's bias. No, I've never seen any full on blowouts, physical blowouts between them. Tons of verbal uh, blowouts. Should be on the scope. What? Overruled. So ask about well, verbal. I, I've certainly seen Miss Heard grab Whitney, um, um, push her, push her around. Uh, there were a number, number. There were half a dozen times when uh, we, some of us, whoever, whoever was in the general vicinity, would have to leave. Um, this is at Orange when Whitney and Amber were living at Orange. Uh, Whitney and her boyfriend <clears throat> at the time, Sean Krzyzewski, uh and uh, he, we actually we had to leave the apartment. And why, wait why in the it? car while they fought. And when you say fought, do you mean physical, physically or physical? And when you said Miss Heard would push Whitney around, do you mean that to physically push her or metaphorically? Both. Ah, uh, smirk. <sighs> Um, you heard Whitney testify that she lived in Penthouse 4 at the Eastern Columbia building for a time, correct? That is correct, yes. Um, how did Whitney come to live in Penthouse 4? Um, my recollection, when Whitney first came to stay at the um, Eastern oh. Columbia building in Penthouse 4 was she and her boyfriend, Sean, had... Um, broken up and uh, she needed a place to go. And so Amber asked if she could stay in penthouse four. And I said, well, of course, she, of course, you know. How long did Whitney live in penthouse four? 
Um, it was well over a year on and off. Did you ever ask Whitney to move out of Penthouse 4? No, I did not, no. Why did Whitney ultimately move out of Penthouse 4? Amber. Objection, foundation. Do you, Do you know, know why? why? His apartment, Your Honor, he was living there. Oh, overruled. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whitney moved out of Penthouse for um, long before the um, marriage, and it was due to a an argument that Miss Heard and Whitney had had. Um, which had to do with um, Whitney working at the Art of Elysium with Jennifer Howell and those people. And then uh, Amber asked her to leave, get out. Where did Whitney live when she moved out of Penthouse 4? My understanding is she went to live with Jennifer Howell. Uh, Your Honor, I know you um, anticipated having a motion at noon. I... Uh, it, it, you can keep going. That's okay. Fine. We can... uh, how much longer in direct do you have? Um, I have a, a, a bit. Okay, it's okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Depp, do you recall hearing testimony during Ms. Hurd's case um, from Mr. Mandel? Yes, I do. And And who is that? Uh, Mr. Mandel is uh, my former business manager of 17 and a half years. Here it comes. They stiffed me out of all my money. At a certain point, I um, uh, discovered had been um, embezzling quite a lot of money. <laughs> so I had to. Uh, Hundreds of millions. All of it. Was it six fifty? And uh, he and 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 my lawyer of seventeen and a half years, as they were uh, in cahoots, as it were. Jeez. And, um, yep. So so yes, Joel Mandel is, uh, and they, which was they, they settled um, their case. Um, with me, they made their settlement. Um, but yes, it was, it was the big, that was a very, yeah. Joel Mandel is a, a very bitter man who um, ended <laughs> up with a lot of money that I worked hard for over the years. <laughs> do you recall Mr. Mandel testifying in this case that um, you do not spend very much money on charity? <laughs> That I don't, sorry? That you do not spend very much money on charity. Objection, Your Honor. Just one approach. approach. Okay. That was testimony in this case? I yep. don't remember. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't remember that specifically, but I would believe it. 100%. Uh, she asked, it was the former business manager, uh, the guy who he just accused of embezzling the money, how much, John, because he would have knowledge of how much Johnny spent on charity. He asked him how much he spent on charity, and he said, "Not very much." I, I believe was the ex with a with a glib sort of smile to it. I guess he it wasn't was, counting himself as charity. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so I bet now they're going to rebut that statement with Johnny's specific acts of charity, like uh, dressing up as Jack Sparrow, going to children's hospitals, probably specific charity where he did spend money, but uh, maybe never disclosed it to the managers, anything like that. <laughs> They attacked his character. He gets to rebut character attacks. Yeah. Normally, he yeah. wouldn't be Mr. able to Dan, talk about just this. Just to remind all. you, my, my question was, what is your response to Mr. Mandel's testimony that you do not spend very much on charity? Uh, my response to that is Mr. Mandel is a very bitter man. And um, one thing about that me, myself, personally, that, with regard to charity donations, um, sending money to a charity, um, I I prefer. I don't 
I would rather that my name were not on it. I don't want the name to be the important thing or the thing that people talk about. So when I donate I ch uh, money, uh, I donate without my name being involved because I, because I don't see that that's important, my name being there in terms of money now. If, if I if I am able to visit hospitals or if I'm able to um, meet with Make-A-Wish children, um, I've held on to the relationships that I've held on to within the Make -A within the Make-A-Wish Foundation and the Children's Hospital and uh, various various other places. Um, Oh, then my obviously my name is involved. When we held premieres in Leicester Square um, for several films, uh, Charlie Jackson and the Chocolate Honor Factory. Is, again, beyond the scope of his response to Mr. Is Mandel's it? testimony. I believe this is in response to Mr. Yeah. Mandel. I'll overrule the objection. Yeah. Absolutely it is. Thank you. You attack his character, you dumbass. When it, bec when it was a public let's call it a donation or whatever. I would talk to the studio. I would talk to Disney. I would talk to Warner Brothers. I would talk to whoever the studio was uh, well before the premiere and make the premiere a benefit that would, once we did what we benefited, we did a benefit a premiere for Great Ormond Street Hospital did a benefit, a couple of benefit premieres for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, I mean, if you can turn a premiere with that many thousands and thousands and thousands of people there into a benefit, um, it, it, it works and it helps. Um, but it wasn't presented under my name, you know, it was Disney's doing this or Warner Brothers is doing this. I'm not looking for the um, pat on the back, as it were. If I can make it happen, great. But I don't need the pat on the back. I don't need the adulation. I don't need the attention. Unlike some other people we know in this case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the charities she donated a portion of your divorce settlement who was the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. Yes. What is your relationship with the CHLA? Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> May we approach Your Honor? She brought out the uh, little snarky statement they made about his novel interest in donating yep. to her charities. Yep. Mm -hmm. Th this is all Amber Heard's team's own doing. Normally, you cannot bolster your own credibility or character through this type of testimony. But if they attack it, you can offer it as rebuttal testimony. Yep. And they did. They spent they spent an entire several weeks, a uh, couple weeks, <clears throat> attacking his character over and over and over. They made this central issue. Johnny Depp's nastiness and his aloofness, his narcissism. They've gone after him on every single trait. And here he is just casually and calmly denying all of it. Uh, I think this is fantastic testimony uh, so far. Again, cross is a big risk. We'll see how yeah. that goes. Well, I just want to find out how much he pledged. Yeah, <laughs> he should have just, well, I've, and I, in addition to my work, I've pledged, 10 40 billion, billion dollars yeah. <laughs> <laughs> million trillion dollars oh my gosh yeah uh again if if you are watching this stream thank you we're we're almost at seventy six thousand people which is wow. insane wow uh wow. if you like this stream please click the like button if you're not subscribed uh, I know many of you are because you're in the chat, but if you're not subscribed, click on the subscribe button. We do this not just for Johnny Depp's trial, but other trials and also other issues as well. It really helps out. Uh, it It's so weird that a click of a button can help like the people who bring you content and entertainment, but it, it really does. It really does. So we appreciate it. Plus all of my guests are in the description, except no, wait, Andrea Burkhardt is also in the description. Everybody's 
uh, YouTube channels are in that description. So you can click on anybody's name. I think it's got like a gray box around it. It'll bring you to their page. You can go ahead and uh, click subscribe on their stuff and watch it as well. We all cover different topics normally. I mean, this is kind of Johnny Depp uh, six week period for the, the legal YouTube community, but there's a bunch of other topics that we all talk about uh, as well. So make sure you check it out. If you're into this stuff, you won't find uh, better coverage. That was very kind of you. Thank you for that. I was excluding you specifically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, while we have this, uh, Lindsay Ante says, speaking of NFTs, check out BSC News on Twitter um, to enter to win a piece of Depp's collection. What is your relationship with the CHLA? Aptly titled, Never Fear Truth. Um, heard lost. Yeah, heard I've lost. I've had a relationship with the CHLA for probably 20 years. Or wow. Or so. And um, what's just the nature of that relationship? Um... Well, since since you know, uh, sometimes there are Make a Wish kids who are in the hospital there, and that their wishes to objection, Your Honor. Yes. I, Your Honor, may we approach? Okay. Sure. I genuinely love Make a Wish uh, as an organization and what they do, especially as I've gotten to know them over the past couple of years. And I am, I am proud to not hide my name. I, I happily donate. I won't tell you amounts, but I happily donate to make a wish, uh, on a rather consistent basis. Um, I, I think the work they do is integral. I don't need accolade for it. I just want other people to understand that it's a good organization that I trust. And, uh, I, I would love to see more and more money flow into it. Uh, because they they really do phenomenal work and they make dollars go a really long way. So that's a big thing for a charity. I mean, you can always look up the percentage they spend on administration, and you'd be shocked with some organizations how much they yeah. spend on their higher yep. ups. <clears throat> well, Even uh, some very high profile ones. Yes, a, uh, very well. a wish kid in Minnesota, their wish uh, averages around ten thousand dollars, and to think you can send in, uh, like a family of five to Disney for a week for ten grand, um, you can't do that except through leveraging connections like Make-A-Wish. And uh, it's it's really impressive how they're able to turn that money into Mr. Depp, I'd like to things. take you back to uh, exactly six years prior to this week, the week of May 21st through May 27th, 2016. Um, what happened at the beginning of that week? May uh, 21st. Uh, excuse me, May 20th. May 20th. Um, this is, we're, we're talking 2016 here. Yes. Um, May 20th, um, the afternoon of May 20th, afternoon, evening. Um, my uh, my mom um, uh, made Hi, Johnny. Her exit. She um uh, she'd been fighting. Um, Is this a birthday? Cancer or no? Numerous times and no, for many years, and she she fought um, all the way to the end. And um, so my mother passed away on the 20th of May. Um, I, which does bring instant perspective into one's mind. I uh, spoke to Amber that night. I called her on the telephone, explained to her that my mom had passed, that Isu had passed and that um, I thought that the best thing we could do was to um, that I file for divorce. Your say. Here. What Mr. Depp told Miss Heard. We can move on. Your okay. Honor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Depp, what happened at the end of that week on May twenty seventh, two thousand sixteen? May twenty seventh, my daughter's birthday. May twenty seventh. Um. Oh. 
I was not in Los Angeles. I was on the way to on tour, and uh, that was when uh, Mr. Um, went for the restraining order. Um, and oh yeah, also that was the that was the day that uh, um, uh, Alice Alice through the looking glass, um, a film I'd done, was opening. Did Miss Heard know that you were out of town on May twenty seventh? By the way, maximize exposure by coinciding with yes. the premiere of a movie. How would she have known that? I told her I was going on tour. I, I mean, it was, Jackson here saying it was well established. Can't believe they how didn't long catch were you going to be out of town on that tour? Two to three months. And did Miss Heard know how long you'd be out of town? I, I don't know if she knew exactly how long I'd be out of town, but it was a pretty extensive tour of Europe. <clears throat> they ever remake Jaws? He should be Quint. <laughs> How did Miss Heard's actions on May 27th, 2016 affect you? And Amber you? could play the shark. The chum. <laughs> Changed everything. Objection, Your Honor. Relevance oh, it didn't change everything? Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wait till the objection, please. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> this is one of the key that little finger right there. <laughs> Again, it, it's those little things that he is able to do because he's Johnny Depp that normally yes. like you would you would say that'd be annoying or irritating. Most most witnesses or parties don't have the charisma to do something like that. And then just very calm. I'm sorry, Judge. Sorry. Yes, uh, <laughs> that that's the type of stuff. And I, I think throughout this entire trial, it's it's actually worked very, very well for him. Um, well, exactly. Compare and contrast that with the, you know, Dr. Nosferatu the other day when he was acting basically, he's basically the same snarky things and it didn't go over that well. He's not charismatic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yes, as a refresher to the chat, I know we talked about this, but there's more people in here now. Um, the uh, Johnny Depp's out of court statements are also hearsay. All out of court statements are hearsay unless they fall into a given exception. And so uh, Johnny Depp cannot recall his own statements um, and, and bring them to bolster his current testimony. Um, so I know it sounds weird because you go here and say, well, I heard someone say this and now I'm saying it. That's kind of the logical part of it. And that, that is kind of the logical reasoning behind most hearsay, but if you try to bring in your own uh, statement, it is the same because that statement cannot be cross-examined. It's <clears throat> being characterized in a self-serving purpose. Um, and, and there's no way to kind of rebut that purpose. Yeah. I mean, the whole point of hearsay is that it's inherently unreliable when presented in court. So there has to be mm -hmm. some exception that lends it reliability that otherwise would not exist. Right. Uh, okay. Let me. Let me read a couple chats while we're at sidebar here. Um, okay, where did the, where the heck did we go? Uh, around here. Uh, that was Elaine having nightmares about Tug. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Uh, this is from Tank Commando. Have you considered recording the Constitution classes you teach your homeschool students? I'm sure a lot of us would appreciate having a resource for our kids that isn't just the cucked version that they taught in public school. Uh, I've considered it. Um, I'll, I'll think about it. I, I We're done for the year, but I'll, I'll consider doing it. It's a very high-level thing. And, I mean, it, it's mostly just encouraging the kids to actually read the document. Uh, to read the Constitution, which I think is the failing of most people opining on the Constitution is that they first don't read it. Um, you know, th these are junior high and high school classes. We don't get deep into the weeds on case law unless I'm in a bad mood. Uh, so so it's, it's really just reading the words of the text and giving them some background explanation about what they are. But I'll think about it. JL says, I want Dr. Mommy to do to me what Amber Heard did to that bed. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Depp, what has it been uh, like for you to listen to Miss Heard's testimony? You need a doctor, mommy, if you want that. 
What has it been like for you to listen to Ms. Hurd's testimony at this trial? Objection relevance, Your Honor. Oh, overruled. Judge wants to hear it too. <laughs> well, she's lied about me constantly. It's horrible. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's the clip. It's it's insane to hear heinous um, defamatory accusations of violence, sexual violence that she's attributed to me, that she's accused me of. Um, I don't think anyone enjoys having to uh, split themselves open and tell the truth. But um, there are times when one just simply has to because it's gotten out of control. It Horrible. Um, Ridiculous, humiliating, ludicrous, painful, savage, un, unimaginably brutal, cruel, um, and all false, all false. Um, I wanted. I, 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 no human being is perfect, certainly not, none of us, but I have never in my life committed sexual battery physical abuse, all these outlandish, outrageous stories of me committing these things and living with it for six years and waiting to be able to bring the truth out. So this is not uh, easy for any of us. I know that. But um, uh, no matter what happens, I did get here and I did tell the truth. And I have spoken up for what I've been carrying on my back reluctantly for six years. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. That's a good, that's a good finish. Here we go.